One often overlooked but crucial component to making a comic book is the lettering. Right now I'm in the process of lettering my own comic and I thought I'd take you behind the scenes and show you exactly how I set up and start lettering a page. <laughs> Greetings everyone, welcome to the underground lair where we bring our creations to life. I'm Scott with CircWorks. I'm a professional illustrator, designer, and mad creator because you know what? You have to be a little crazy to do this thing called art. And one thing that I'm crazy about, if you know me, and that's comics. Uh, specifically making comics. So I'm in the process, I have been in the process for a while, working on my own comic book project, Young and the Dead. This is the most recent issue, although I, like I said, I'm working on the next issue. This is issue number four. I'm working on issue number five. Getting really close. In fact, I'm actually at the lettering stage. This is one of the, the final stages of doing the comic. Uh, and because of that, I wanted to just take you and kind of show you how I uh, approach lettering a page because it's super important and and many people don't put that much you know, thought into how they should letter a page. And uh, I've said this before, and I'm gonna say it again, but just bad lettering can just ruin a great comic. So you don't wanna do that. And it's, it's really easy to learn. I've got other products out there. I've got the Comic Lettering Masterclass, which is uh, for Photoshop. Illustrator and then there's another version for Procreate and that product will talk about all the different techniques and rules and it comes with brushes and uh, word balloon and caption templates, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so if that's something you're interested in, I will leave a link to that. But other than that, uh, you can do all this stuff yourself even without that. But it is it is good to, to understand some of the rules. I'm gonna go over some of those uh, just so you get a little crash course. But if you want the full extent of all that lettering knowledge, the Comic Lettering Masterclass is a great product for that. But we're gonna jump into the process of lettering my current issue that I'm working on for Young and the Dead. If you're not familiar with Young and the Dead, it is a kids versus zombie adventure. It's in the vein of uh, like Goonies and Monster Squad, all those great 80s action adventure films starring kids. This time they're up against zombies in my story. It's kind of like Goonies meets Night of the Living Dead. So if you think you might like that, you can also find links to where you get that on my website at CircWorks.com. But enough about me. I want to show you kind of how I approach lettering so you can apply it to your own projects. So let's get to it. Okay, so here I am in Adobe Illustrator. I have this file here. This is my Young and the Dead Letter Size Master. It's an Adobe Illustrator file. Now I use a number of different programs to create a comic. Uh, some people like to just stay with one. So typically I do a lot of my illustration, my penciling. If when I do digital penciling, I will do that in Clip Studio Paint. Uh, I I tend to color in Photoshop, or not color, but in this it's a black and white comic, but it's shaded, so I do my shading in Photoshop. You can also do that in Clip Studio Paint. I'm just more familiar with, with Photoshop for that. But the one thing I don't use Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint for is the lettering, um, because those are more raster programs, and I tend to like to use vector programs for lettering, because vector is a lot more versatile in doing your lettering. So, now I know not everyone has Adobe Illustrator. Um, a lot of people nowadays are using Procreate. Pro, I don't. I'm not sure about Procreate's capability for or how versatile it is for doing lettering. But in any case, whatever program you use, a lot of what I'm going to talk about is still relevant. So don't be put off by that. But there are other vector programs like I think Inkscape. Um, Affinity Designer that you can use uh, that are vector programs that are a little less expensive than Adobe Illustrator but this is just the way I've been doing it and it works well for me so let me explain to you a little bit what I have here so this is just sort of a master template that I've created and it's a good idea once you save this also save a copy so in case you because you're going to be overriding this a number of times which each new page that you create um, but basically what I have here, I've got a number of different layers which I'll go into and then I've got most of the fonts that I use and the correct font size that I'm using. Right now this artwork, this is another page, this is like one of the beginning pages of my new issue uh, that I'm working on. Um, this is one page that I've already done the lettering for. 
And uh, as you can see right here, all the type is really the same size. One thing you don't want to do is you don't want to fit your type to fit your space. So like if you don't have a lot of space, you don't want to make that, that type smaller just to fit. You want your type to be pretty much uniform. And that, that doesn't necessarily count for the sound effects. Those can be bigger or larger or smaller or whatever. But for the dialogue uh, um, and the, you know, the, the, anything that's in the word balloons, you want to keep that genuine, genuinely the same, or generally, sorry, the same size. Um, and that takes a little planning to begin with because you want to make sure that you, that your, your, whatever font you're using, whatever size you're using is going to fit within that. And uh, when I create a page, I'm always thinking where that lettering is going to go and making sure I have enough room for that. Also, because I write my own comics, I also make sure that I don't go, I try not to go in these big diatribes or whatever with pe when people are speaking. I try to edit that down if possible. And it's hard to do because I like to, I like to talk and I like to add a lot of character in the way people talk, but sometimes you have to limit that because you just don't have a lot of room in your panels. So, so far with this issue, I've been doing better than previous issue. I haven't had to edit on, edit on the fly, like when I, when I get to that page, like, oh, I gotta change this. So far, everything's managed to, because I was thinking more about that in the beginning when I was working on it. So if you're writing your own comics, make sure you don't go crazy with the amount of words and everything you're using. You know, keep to the point while still keeping to the characters, you know, how they would talk and everything. Um, but you want to keep that font pretty much the same size. And the way I, sometimes the way I figure a font is just, I will just or the size of a font, I might scan or find a scan of a comic book page online that's you know sort of actual size and just pair that up to the size that I'm working on and, and see what size they use. But this is a pretty comfortable size. Let me see. So right now I am using a font. Um, this is called, it's a, it's, this is a comic craft font. It's called CC, uh, is it Mono, monogalous? I don't know. Mono, uh, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, um, monologous, I guess. Like, mo I guess it's derived from like monologuing. So, monologous, I think, is the name of it. Um, but this is a, like I said, a comic craft font. I've got a great font right now in the co or the comic lettering masterclass. It's called Secret Identity. I would be using that font if I hadn't already done all the issues with this particular font because, and I want to keep things consistent, but uh, just an idea. So I'm using an eight point font right now. So that's a pretty good font size for your comic, about eight points. Um, you don't want to go too much smaller than that, probably not too much bigger. That's a really comfortable size. So that's the size that I'm working with. Um, so just keep that in mind and you want to keep all that consistent. Um, the other thing I just want to, so I want to kind of go through and show you the layers that I've set up. So right here, I've got my little guides. You can see these blue guides. This is the absolute edge of, uh, this is like the bleed edge, meaning if you like, if you see right here where this woman right here, how that kind of, see this red edge? And that's on this first thing labeled border. This is just a little red edge that I put it. That's where pretty much the comic is going to cut off. Anything beyond that is just where it bleeds over. And a bleed is just because you want you want to extend your artwork past where it's going to cut off so that so that anything that goes off the page like right here these panels they don't need a bleed because there's a white border certain panels are going to bleed off to the edge of this the page so you're going to make sure extend your artwork all the way to that size um, and right now i'm working when i say eight point font i'm working this is an actual size this is the actual size that's going to be printed. The, what I do, usually I work at a larger size, and then once I get all the artwork done at that larger size, then what I'm going to do is I'm going, then I go ahead and I reduce in, in a separate file, and I'll put like, a, these are all JPEGs. This is probably not the actual art that's going to appear, um, this file. Um, but this is a, you know, this is a JPEG set at 30 or 300 DPI at the actual size that's going to be printed. Um, and I do my lettering at actual size, whereas the artwork I do at a larger size. Now, if you are doing your lettering on the larger size before you reduce everything, then it's going to be larger than at eight point. But at this stage, like I said, I just like to reduce all my pages, a separate file, because I don't want to get rid of the original larger file, but I'll reduce all of those and save those in a separate file. And that's kind of what I use just here, just as a guide. And as you can see right here, I've got this layer and that is my artwork layer on this layer. So I've got my guides here. This is where I want the bleed to go to. 
Um, and so that's the that's the artboard. So I want to make sure that artboard fits right in there. And you'll see as I import new artwork how that works. Um, then I've got two layers here. This one is for the copy, meaning all the type. Okay, and then below that I've got my balloon layer. And I like to keep those on a separate layer so they don't interfere. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, like I said, this is just a template. This is a page that I've already done. And all this stuff here, again, these are just certain sound effects, uh, fonts that I use just so I can go ahead and click on those. And you know, once I click on them, for instance, if I, anything I type, say, if I have this type right here, if I go ahead and if that's selected and I go here and click on this in Illustrator, it'll change that. So once I import my type, all I have to do is take my eyedropper and I can change the font real easy just by clicking on it. So that's why I have all these, some of my more commonly used fonts. So I've got this, um, this right here is the font that I use mostly when the zombies are talking. I think this is a, I think this is a Blambot font. I think it's called Casket Breath. I'm not sure I, if I'm correct. Um, and then I've got my, um, just my standard, the uh, CC uh, Monogolus or whatever it is. Font. Real weird uh, name for a font, uh, but it's, but it is a really good font. So, okay. So what I'm going to do now. Uh, like I said, this is just a template, so I am going to go and I'm going to lock all my layers. And I'm going to go here to the art layer, I'm going to click on that art layer, I'm just going to get rid of that. Actually, I'm going to get rid of these here too, all that stuff. That's pre-saved on another one. Now what I'm going to do is I click on this layer where I'm going to drop my artwork, and then I'm going to go and I'm going to import my art. So I'm going to go, uh, let's see, place. So I'm going to place my artwork in here and I'm going to find, so see right here where it says printed size JPEG. So these are my printed size just that I'm just using. Let me select page five. That's the page we're going to be using. There we go. So, and now I'm going to move it into place right here where those blue lines are. And that way my bleed will extend off the edge of the page as you can see. Now keep in mind anything that's in this red, anything outside that red is likely going to get cut off. And in actuality, I should have another border here. I tend to eyeball this, but you want to have another border that's set inside here a little bit for your word balloons. You don't want to put any word balloons or any type anywhere close to this because you don't want that to get cut off. Um, but as you can see, the majority of my panels are right in, right in this area, so that's where I want to kind of keep my word balloons. So now that I've been part of the artwork, one thing I can do is I can click on this page, and then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to reduce the opacity here. That way, my balloons and my type are going to show up a little better. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to just grab, uh, I'm just going to grab a uh, some type right here in the font that I'm going to be using and I'm going to bring up now this is I've got this in a Google uh, Doc uh, this is my this is my script so I'm gonna go ahead and here we see interior ice cream truck or uh, let's see right now right here the this is the first panel ice cream truck rolls down the highway Stephanie's voice coming from a CB radio and then this is what I want here there we go Sam, come in Sam. So I'm going to copy that. And as you can see, all the dialogue is in uppercase because typically with comics, you use uppercase lettering. Um, some comics nowadays are using lowercase, but I tend to stick with uppercase. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and I'm going to drop that in here. Now, now this is the one thing that this, if there's anything you learn from this, this video, this is it. The crossbar eye rule, and this is a dead giveaway if that you're an amateur letterer if you if you if you don't follow these rules. So this is a crossbar eye. Let me show you. This is a non-crossbar eye. Yep, sorry. I'll show you the difference. It, that's a non-crossbar eye, that's a crossbar eye. So what I want to do is I want to go through and change any crossbar eyes to non-crossbar eyes unless it's a personal pronoun for I, like I, I'm, I'll, I've, anything like that you can use a crossbar I for. Anything else you don't use that crossbar I for. So that's the first thing I do when I import my, my type. 
is make sure that that all those crossbar eyes are changed to non-crossbar eyes. And some new fonts, I think Comic Craft has a feature where it automatically identifies where those should go. That's a really cool feature. This is an older one of their fonts, so I don't think it does that. Um, the other thing, I want to make sure that my type is centered, because when you're working with word balloons, you always want to center your type. Um, in captions, is a little different. Captions typically in Western comics are left justified. Uh, meaning they they all start at the left of the page. My book, I just decided that I don't want any captions in my book. I just want you to kind of find your way through because there's there's certain things where I don't want you to know what time period you're in and everything. So I don't want a caption that says present or past or anything. So I don't really use captions in this particular comic, and that's just a personal choice of mine. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to space this out. So I'm just going to. Go like that. Now that works really good. Now it looks like there is there a space there? Yeah, there's a little space there. That's a little better. So typically, considering that most of your type is going to go in word balloons, you want to make sure that it's kind of stacked like this. Smaller at the top, wider in the middle, smaller again on the bottom. Like that. So that's kind of what you want your, your lettering, that's kind of the orientation you want it to be. And it can get trickier the more type is in there and sometimes you have to play around with it a little bit but that's the great thing about digital lettering you can do that and then change it relatively easy okay so that's my copy layer now what I'm gonna do is just to make sure I've got the right point size for um, because or the stroke size for this balloon um, and like in in the comic lettering masterclass it has pre-done balloons that you can drop in and you can use I'm gonna show you how to do your own but I am just selecting this just for the reason because, for instance, if you got a balloon like this, and it could be a different uh, stroke size, like that's the other thing. You don't want your stroke size of your balloons to be all over the place either. You want to be consistent. So this is the stroke size that I'm using. It's one point, so it's, it's white um, fill and black stroke, one point black. So, so now that I've got that, I'm gonna go over here and then I'm gonna go up to, make sure I'm on my balloon layer because it's under the copy layer. I'm gonna to go to my this shape tool, I'm gonna to find my ellipse. And then I'm gonna drop that like that. Not bad, not bad, but we're gonna do some, we're gonna do a few things to it. Now, a couple things. I see so many people, I don't know why, but I see so many people doing these balloons that are like this, where it's just, where the type is resting right on the balloons, don't do that. You want to have, I may be guilty of having a little too much space in my balloons. I like to give it a little air, but something more along those lines. And like I said, I like just a little more than that. And that's my personal preference, but you want to give some breathing room in there. Um, looks pretty good, lips. I've seen a lot of people do this, all right? There's, there's not really a problem with that. Um, now, a uh, couple things so and this if you remember the the type that I mentioned it's actually coming from a CB radio so we're gonna do a little different uh, style uh, because this the, the the person isn't isn't in this uh, in this van it's coming from the radio so we want to indicate that so I usually do radio balloons and um, and I'm gonna show you how to do one of those this is kinda how I do it I'm getting my um, my pen tool and I'm drawing these little spikes here popping out here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of those and then I'm going to merge those and then what I'm going to do one more time I'm going to come in here and then I'm going to do that and then I'm going to do that so now I don't know what you saw but I just if you saw what I did just did now I'm going to merge these two with my Pathfinder tool, those are one shape. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Pathfinder tool and I'm gonna minus that. So, and that's how I do my radio balloons. So it's just kind of a cool effect just to show that it's not a person talking, but it's coming from an electronic device. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw my word balloon tail. So this one's gonna be a little different. Typically if I was gonna do a standard word balloon tail, I'd, I'd use my, um, 
my pen tool and this takes a little getting used to if you're not used to working in Illustrator but like I said once you learn how to do it it's very versatile and you can do almost anything you want so that's typically the word balloon that I would that's what I would use for a standard word balloon all right now uh, we're not going to do a standard word balloon because this is an electronic it's coming from a CB radio and if anyone is <laughs> wasn't around in like the 70s you might not know what a CB radio is but so I'm gonna do sort of a little lightning bolt type thing just like that all right so now of course typically you want your word balloons to point to the character's mouth this, this time it's not coming from a character's mouth, it's coming from a radio, so I'm just going to point it to about where the radio might be. Um, typically the radio's in the dashboard or whatever, so something like that. Now what I'm going to do is, now I could, do, I could go through here and pick up and take this balloon and this balloon tail, and I can just make them a compound shape by merging these in the Pathfinder tool like that. Uh, the problem is I may want to move this around and once you do that you can't do anything. I'm going to undo this. Let's see. Control Z. Now here's what you can do. You can select both of those and then here in the Pathfinder tool there's going to be uh, right here this you want this make compound shape. And what this does is it merges them but as you can see when you click on it it's still like two objects so if I need to move this around I can go back up here and then I can go release compound shape and then what I can do is I can I can ungroup those I can tweak things around if I want and then you know I can go ahead and go back here and make compound shape again um, so so yeah I can do that if I want all right now let me let's let's do one other one because I want to show you like I said these elliptical balloons they look pretty good and they work pretty well for these radio balloons but I want to show you something that you might want to consider doing with some of your other balloons so once again I'm going to go to the copy I'm gonna I'm just gonna grab oh, I don't want to take that I want to copy it so I'm just making a copy again using the same size I'm gonna go I'm gonna find my script here here and then I'm going to go so let's see Steph so so this is coming from Sam one of you know one of my characters who's right here so this is actually him speaking not the CB so what I'm going to do is do this here fairly simple it's one word so we don't have to worry there's no eyes to worry about so I don't have to worry about that crossbar eye um, so there's the type now what I'm going to do is I'm just I'm making it so I can't write to this and I'm going to my balloon layer and I can just click that again just so I get the information there for the size of the stroke and everything and then I'm going to my um, going to my elliptical shape Try my ellipse right here not bad not bad okay now here's another thing to pay attention to oh, let me select both of these the type in this so you, one thing I would avoid doing is having these tangents here. See how it rests right up against that? You don't want to do that. A lot of times I'll either move it down here or and some people don't like to do this but I I don't mind doing it, breaking the border a little bit, but just a tiny bit just so it's not resting on that line. You don't want to create all these tangents and everything. This I got plenty of room so I'm gonna move this down a little bit here. Um, and but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on my balloon with my direct selection tool and that's this white one underneath and what that's going to do is it's going to give me these little pull, these little handles when I click on them you can see these little bezier they're called bezier handles and what I can do is I can go ahead and I can just drag that a little bit here drag that a little bit here drag that a little bit here and drag that a little bit here so it's not just this perfect ellipse and I think it looks better that way so I tend to do that with pretty much most of my balloons in this case because it's electronic it doesn't need to I don't want it to feel as personal so I don't mind that it's a perfect ellipse and some people don't even care about that um, the other thing you can do and I've seen people do this a lot too is if if you're worried about the size and everything um, if you don't want that to go over you know over your overlap your your border here your panel border um, then what you could do is you can also do this this is pretty common in comics uh, I'm just creating another box here and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna 
subtract that, which that actually brought up that layer. So let me bring that back. But see, and it just kind of cuts off here. So you can do that as well. And then what you want to do, like I said, you want to have that, you want to have that balloon tail pretty much getting as close to the character's voice as possible. All right, one more time, we're gonna go here and we're gonna go make compound shape. And if we need to reduce that, reduce that later, we can do that. So there is, you know, there's tons more I can teach you about lettering. And like I said, in the Comic Lettering Masterclass, there's all the rules, all the different things that you need to know about creating comics, plus tons of tools, different fonts, pre-made word balloons, uh, pretty much everything you need to know to learn how to do comics and and it is available like i said there's a procreate version and there's adobe version that works for pro or for illustrator and photoshop um so that is available but but yeah so i now i'm just going to keep going on and and finish lettering the rest of my comic um but again just to reiterate what i've done is i've created now the other thing I should mention, this still says right up here, it's still labeled as Comic Lettering Master. So what I'm going to do before I forget is go ahead and save as, and then I'm just going to save that as uh, page five. And I already started this. I'm for this demo. I'm redoing it, so I'm going to overwrite this and create a new file over the one I did. But typically, you're going to be creating a new file each time. Um, so yeah. And then, so after I get this done page, I'll go back to that master file. And again, it's got all my information here, so I don't have to look up all my fonts. All my fonts are here. I can just go through here. And then when I'm done, when I'm done with these, like when I'm done with this page, then I can go through and select all this stuff and just delete it and then save it for one last time so you don't have all this other stuff. Keeping in mind that I still have my master page, um, which again has, has these these, uh, it's got my guides on one layer, it's got where my artwork's gonna go, it's got my balloons on another layer, it's got my copy, and then I've just got my that red border where the comic is gonna cut off. So that's, that's how I set up a page and a little bit on how I do the lettering and word balloons. Again, there's a lot of other stuff that I, you know, this video's already pretty long, so I don't wanna get too much longer. But there you go, hopefully that's helpful. And if you have any other questions, let me know. But I just wanted to show you setting up a comic book page, lettering and illustrator, this is how I do it. There's a number of different ways to do this in other programs. But e like I said, even if you aren't using Illustrator, I think some of these tips, whether it's how to change your your balloons so they're not so perfect, or the crossbar eye rule, or you know, creating radio balloons, or anything like that, uh, hopefully that stuff's helpful. Okay, so there you have it. Just a few tips on lettering a comic. Of course, it is a huge subject. So there's a lot more you can dive into with that. Uh, also, like I said, the Comic Lettering Masterclass is a great way to do that. Uh, and then there's other sources out there. I've got other videos. I, my Making Comics 101 series has a whole episode on lettering. I dive a little deeper into it in that. You can check that out here on this YouTube channel. But really, I just want you to understand how important lettering is because a lot of people just, they, it's an afterthought. They don't really think about it too much much but if you want if that it's it's like if you do bad lettering it's gonna stick out and it's just gonna ruin everything else so really take some pride in your lettering and hopefully some of these tips will show you at least a beginning how you can do that um, I am really excited to, to at the point I am right now my comic book to get that out to you guys I know a lot of people you've been asking when the next issue is and it's getting closer I mean obviously the lettering is one of the final pieces I've still got to do the cover design and, uh, and a few graphic design things and then uh, and, uh, and like I said, I'm excited to get that out because it's been a long time coming. So it is getting closer. But uh, again, I just wanted to show you where I'm at in the comic and also show you some lettering tips that you can use for your own book. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions about lettering or anything else. Uh, you can find a lot of that stuff on this channel, but if there's something specific, let me know. I try to respond to every comment in the comic section. If I don't get to you that the next day, ho hopefully within a few days, I will definitely get back back to you. So leave a comment, spark up a conversation. And other than that, I will see you guys later. That is all.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at Surfworks on social media, and now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to Surfworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.